what we have here today is we have a John Deere tractor and we're going to replace the injection pump because the weight retainer has gone out in the governor then the symptoms are that it shuts off and wait a minute it'll start back up and run for a little bit it might blow blue smoke and then it slowly goes down and dies again so as you can see it's a standardine rosa master pump and if we get close enough to see the numbers on it there but uh, we'll start here in just a minute and start unhooking linkage and disconnecting lines all right first thing we're going to do is we're going to drain fuel out of the injection pump by removing the two screws from the side cover and this is the timing window on the side of the Rosa Master pump so we loosen that one a little bit and then we'll swing that uh, window to the side a little cover that's good don't we'll take it all the way there you are just pull it out to the side and fuel is going to run out Just turn it in, take your screwdriver and turn that in until it's, there you are. Got a little rubber gasket underneath that cover, so when you get that cover pulled up, swing it with the cover. Let's tighten that screw just a little bit, and then swing that, there you go, that way it won't fall out. Swing that gasket with the cover, swing it this way if you want, whichever. There you go. Now, that way you can see there, the fuel's coming down out of the pump. The next step is if you look back there, you'll see that little cover plate in the flywheel housing, and there's a pin on the bottom that's sticking out. We will take that loose with a wrench, take the plate off, turn that around, and push it back in there against the flywheel that's in that housing. Then we turn the engine around until that pin falls in a notch in the flywheel. If you look at the front of that pin, it has a point on it. You will feel it drop into that punched hole on the flywheel, or drilled hole. Then, inside this window on the side of that pump, two marks will line up, and we'll get better pictures of that when we're ready. While we are waiting on the fuel to drain out of the pump, we have already taken the four injection lines loose at the injectors. Just make sure the nuts are loose so that we can remove the injection lines as a unit when we take the pump, take them loose from the pump. Next step, we got the throttle linkage loose, tied it up out of the way. Then we got to go back over behind to get the shutoff lever loose. It's a little more difficult because you're working between the block and the pump with this rod. And there's a powder key and a washer that you want to save. So we'll pull that linkage out if I can. Show you how it comes out of that loop. Let's see if I can do it one handed. Alright, now. Got it up out of the way. Let's get it out of there. Get it down from that lever. that drop down and let's got that now that we have the throttle and the shutoff levers loose we're going to take the fuel inlet and the return lines loose 
and we'll support that fitting when we take this one loose support this elbow when we take that one loose we have turned the fuel off on the petcock at the front of the tank so this should not leak a whole lot out of the back if it does continue then we got to check the shut off on the tank one thing we did before we started was to spray the pump down and the injectors with brake clean parts cleaner as you can tell it's quite dry we sprayed it all down so that way it keeps dirt from getting into the injection lines and the same thing on the lines up here on the injectors which we'll plug those injectors once we get the lines off so we're currently taking the return line loose from the top of the pump and just be sure that the line doesn't turn with the nut make sure the nut is free to spin on the line so that you're not twisting your lines closing them down you definitely don't want to do that to the supply line and the return line here because either one will cause you low power and a restriction which we don't want and we have a bucket down there catching the fuel that's running out so once the return line drains from the injectors and all up here it will eventually stop weeping so that's got that we have the line loose for the supply and we have the return line loose and now we're getting ready to uh, take the injection lines loose from the head of the pump when going to remove the injection lines these screws that hold them in are very precise they are torqued to an exact standard so it does not seize the head and rotor in the pump so when you want to remove them always be sure to use a box end wrench and support the wrench and then just kind of strike it to get it to break loose and that way never over torque them always ask your fuel injection pump repair people what to torque them back so that you don't over tighten them and cause a head and rotor seizure which is very expensive so we will take those loose and i'll use this offset 9 16 wrench to get these rotor screws out now let's take a look at the screw that comes out of this head here for the injection line i'm going to back it out i've got it loose what I want you to notice is there's a high pressure sealing washer on the head of the screw. And there's also one above the injection line where it contacts the head and rotor of the pump. Now I'm going to take this carefully and try not to lose that high pressure washer. It's there, sitting right on top there. Well, let me go ahead and get the screw out and I'll show you. Right on that screw, there's that washer. You can get it, if I get it focused, see that washer that's riding around that screw? It is a very hard steel. Let's get the screw out of the way here. Put it up here in this magnet tray, and I'll get this washer off where you can see it. All right, there's that washer right there that goes on the head of that screw when you put it in the pump and on the top of this injection line if i can get it let's see one hand it's kind of difficult there it is okay there's the other one one must go on top of that banjo where it fits onto the head of the pump and one must go on the bottom here where the screw goes in so you have to get these in to prevent damage to the new pump now when they get a pump repaired you will get a little bag that should have eight of those maybe ten they give you a couple extra usually in the repaired pump so that you can replace them don't reuse these because they do crush down 
and they're the only thing that seals the high pressure fuel going to your injectors from leaking out so you want to make sure you replace those when you get your new pump on now up here you'll notice I had to turn this return fitting out of the way to get it clear of this line on the return but always turn it counterclockwise when you go to get it out of the way don't over tighten it because you may have to have a top cover replaced if you crack the top cover turning it in too tight so that's another little tip and trick to watch for but here's the throttle it's loose shut off levers loose on the back side we still have the cover off the side because we're going to time it up as soon as I get these injection lines loose so that then we can have it timed and loosen these two nuts on the front in order to pull the pump back but before we pull it back we're going to wire tie the throttle lever back to this fitting so that it holds the governor weights in their cage inside the pump when you take that shaft out of the pump the governor weights could fall out now it's not critical when you go to take the pump off and you got to have it repaired but when we rebuild pumps we have to do that to assure that there's no problem but it's just a habit I've gotten into working pumps for as many years as I did before it gets dark out here let me issue one word of caution if you'll notice this line is holding that screw a little tighter and it's difficult to turn with my fingers do not do not do not use a wrench and take that screw out all the way get a view up here from the top it's kind of dark now getting darker outside but what happens is if this screw is not lined up straight into that head and rotor this metal of the head and rotor is very very hard if that screw is trying to come out at an angle it could pull the threads and break that metal of this head and rotor if it's in enough tension you can see I'm moving the line a little bit that's what I want to do is have them free at the injectors and move that line enough to where I can unscrew this by hand because if it chips the surface where that washer is supposed to sit you'll have a leak and it will not seal up so be very careful when you take these lines loose that you have them free enough that that screw will come out as I'm turning it now by hand just a word of caution to prevent problems in the future okay now we're basically working in the dark time has flown and it gets dark so early now what you want to use to get the two nuts that hold the pump on is I use my snap-on 9 16 angle offset angle wrench it's maybe not offset but it's just an angle wrench as you can see it's got one angle on one end and tighter angle on the other that way you can get under the pump and get that nut loose without prying against the pump housing you do, do not want to pry the pump housing because you can crack it it's aluminum so once you get these two nuts loose we'll work the one off my hand at the bottom capture it and if I don't by chance I've got a bucket down below oh, since I am in gravels all right let's see come on off Betsy all right now as far as it'll go it's up against the pump housing so we'll work on the top here get it back and you can see the nuts against the pump housing the next step for me to do is to wiggle the pump back let's see if I can get it grab back here at the back just kind of wiggle it back a little bit there's an o-ring in the front that seals the engine oil into the timing case so that you're not leaking engine oil there so now that we have the pump back a little bit it's come out of the pilot hole with the pump pilot on the pump housing 
I'm gonna wiggle it a little bit. See if I can get this bottom nut loose first. Got to get the wrench to do it. Get the angle of it just right. Get it to turn. Let's see if I can get it down in here where you can see. All right. It's hard to hold the camera and do this with the other hand where I would be holding the pump and doing it with one hand so it makes it easier. All right, let's get this top one loose a little more. All right, the top one's off. Now there are two washers. Put them on the magnet tray. And let me go ahead and put the camera down and get that bottom one off. And then I'll be ready to use a magnet and get those. Well, I can do that on top right now. Let's get my magnet. Pull these washers free. Good. That saved losing them. And they're on there. Now, maybe I can get it with my fingers if I pull this back a little more. Yep, let's see. Can I turn it? My hand, it's resting on it. Now, all right, there's the nut. I got the nut off right there. Now, we'll get the magnet again. Wipe my hands here. All right, now, let's get my magnet again, and we'll go back and get those two washers there's a flat a lock washer and a flat washer there's the lock washer that up there i'll go back and get the flat washer off with my magnet if it wants to come there it is i got it all right now I think we're ready let's tie this throttle back and i'll be right back as soon as i get the throttle tied back okay all right now we're back as you can see i did tie the throttle back i used a wire tie which required both hands and i apologize but i put it through the throttle lever tied it back and as you can see this throttle lever is pulled back tight past the wide open position against the governor screw there so it will prevent the governor weights from coming out of their weight retainer and falling down in the pump so that the injection technician will know that we kind of know what we're doing when we take the pump off all right all that's left now is if i can i haven't done this one-handed before Let's see what happens if I can get this pulled back through these lines and in the maze of stuff. I doubt it's going to come back all the way. The injection lines are going to block me, which I thought they might. And the return line. Let's see now if I turn this over a little bit. Now, there we go. And as you can see, there's the two drive shaft seals, one cupped towards the pump, one cupped towards the engine to keep the two fuel and engine oil from mixing. And uh, the shaft is sticking there, so we're gonna have to come back a little farther to get it off the pump injection drive shaft, or I should say injection pump drive shaft. Let's see if it'll come off. A little farther. There's the shear point. Come back a little more. Oh, stuck on the lines. Well, let me get it off with both hands and then we'll go from there. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay. So now we have the pump off. There's the drive end. As you can see, there's the pilot tube, which is bronze. And you see the pilot that goes into the engine compartment, timing cover, and the O-ring that seals the engine oil from coming to the outside. And I still have the timing window on the outside open, but we'll get that fixed. I have the throttle tied back, so we're safe. That's ready to go. Now let's look over here at the tractor and see what I did. To prevent 
moisture from getting into the crankcase I have put a trash bag over the top we still have the hood on here and I went ahead and put the injection lines back on to the injectors and the rock is not standard but I figured that would help hold the trash bag down in case of a little wind we're not expecting any lately but just in case till we get the pump back from the pump shop this should help keep the side of the engine compartments dry and protected and ready to go when we're ready to put the pump back on which we'll do in the next video on how to install the Stanodyne Pump pump Rosamaster onto a 2030 John Deere. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, hit the like button and share it with your friends.